<laughs> my best stories I go to jail for. <laughs> Dude, I got I got some stories with Nazis involved and shit, but that's like a whole 20 minute thing, man. Like, gosh, there's nothing that's been too crazy. There's I've only had one little one where a chick had passed out, but then she went blind. Yeah, one time I had a dude queef on me, but that was only time in record history that that's ever yeah, happened. It's only happened once ever, and it was. I remember that. Oh, my probably my favorite one. I had someone pass out looking at reference images before I even started drawing. I can tell you about the time I tattooed Rick and Martin. No, wait, no, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> I was at the bar after work one night, and this kid is sitting next to me at the bar, I'm drinking a beer, minding my own business, and he goes, this is the greatest night of my life. I've always wanted to go to Pittsburgh and see the Steelers, and I finally did it, and now I'm here, and the only thing that'll make my life complete is if I find a tattoo artist that'll tattoo the words bad ass on my butt cheek. And he's just staring at me, and I'm like, do I tell him? Do I tell him? Do I tell him? I had to do it. I did it. That's I was, crazy. I think I was 18 years old. I was tattooing in a Harley one. Davidson garage. So dude's working on a motorcycle right fucking here. And I'm here tattooing, which is already perfectly sanitary. And the girl's on a table, and I'm tattooing her back. And while her head's like down in the hole, her boyfriend is like trying to just give me a line of something off a key. And I'm like, bro. I, no. At the same time, I feel his old lady's hand under the table go up my fucking shorts, and I'm like, this is getting weird. And I look <laughs> over, and the mechanic working on the motorcycle just looks over, sees her hand on my dick, and he just looks at me and goes, cool, bro. And then he just goes back to working on his motorcycle, and I'm like, this is a fucking weird world. I just had a sure. And then like, the, bump, the bump on the key was early missing. 2000s, yeah. man. Early 2000s. What's that? And then the bump on the key was missing. I, hey, I, you know, I'm not going to answer that question. When I was tattooing for like, Six months, I was I was in a sketchy street shop uh, run by even sketchier people, and I had a guy come in right before closing with a bat with blood on it, talking about he just beat up this guy with it and he's going to jail. He has to get tattooed tonight. And the owner of the shop, I was like 120 pounds, like a little a little kid. The owner of the shop tossed me the keys and was like, "Lock up when you're done with him," and just left. Funny enough, I actually tattoo his kids now, and uh, they're great clients. I definitely had a client that I'm fairly certain gave me cookies that was laced oh, with, with the, his DNA. Gosh damn it. Sorry. My mentor saw the whole thing, and his name's Kanaya, but all I got out of him in that moment was this face. No help whatsoever. And the guy was just like, I want to watch you eat one. And I don't think I saw him blink the whole time I tattooed him either. His eyes were just self-lubricating. And I didn't know where to go or what to do, so... I ate the cookie. I ate a cookie and for, I took a bite and I tried to kind of like, like cookie monster it where I was just like... But it's still... He's still inside you. I had a lady come into my shop and I just told this story yesterday. So she got tattooed on her number one cock sucker across her chest with a huge cock that was squirting a load of cum across her left tit. You did it? Fuck yeah, I did it. And I did it beautifully. It was veiny and everything. I was, it was gorgeous. And when I finished all the outline and started shading, she asked me to take a 30 minute break. And this is what made me remember it forever. And I said, it's gonna hurt a lot more when we go back. Why do you need such a long break? And she said, I gotta get my kids from school. They just got out. I'll drop them off at home and I'll come back. I swear to God. I was working in a shop and this little old lady comes in and she's like, I wanna get tattooed. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm like, all right, what do we want? I want the words eat me. You know, she's like, like in her 70s, like late 70s. So it's just like, all right. <laughs> Be a man, set up, you're professional. It's canvas, right? Where are we gonna do it? That's where I ask, where are we gonna do it? I wanna put it on the outside of my vagina. I'm just going, oh. There was this one guy and he, uh, it was like my, I'm really good friends with this one girl and he was her brother. So he oh. had asked her, through her to get an appointment with yeah. me. So I turned on like other people and whatever. He shows up for his appointment and he goes, I don't have any money. And oh I really want to get tattooed. And I was like, you're a fucking dick. And he's like, but come on, man, I really want one. I'm like, the only tattoo I'm doing on you today is a dick, so get out. 
And he got the dick? He sat down and he said, <laughs> do it! Oh no. <laughs> I didn't even put a stencil on. I just went straight freehand. Oh, I God. looked up monster cocks on Google and I just freehanded that thing. That sucker go, like, was life size, full this? realism. And it was like mm -hmm. right here, like on his leg. And like literally, he goes. Where was it? Right here on his leg. At least he right can there. Say that he has a yeah, his he's hung. His knee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so like he, he got a lot of like free shots at the bars because <laughs> he was like, okay. I bet you my dick doesn't go past my knee. And then he just roll up his pant leg, and they'd be like, ah. This he had to have been probably pushing seventy. Came into the shop like he had been tattooed plenty plenty of times, but this was his first tattoo. Uh, and he ended up getting straight up eyeballs on the back of his head for his first tattoo. Now, he was, he was acting weird, he was kind of funny, you know, we were having a good time with him and everything. He left, came back an hour later, he, he's like, I forgot something in your booth. So he goes in there, pulls out a 38 out of the <laughs> artist's drawer, like, he, you know, she just left for a second, so he hides his gun in her drawer. <laughs> um, and it turns out he robbed a liquor store before he came oh to the tattoo God. shop. <laughs> yeah. Got eyeballs tattooed on the back of his head and hid the gun there. My first year of tattooing, I tattooed this guy who was a zoophile. For those who don't know, zoophile is not like, um, like bestiality, but they're emotionally and physically attracted to animals. Hmm. And he was also a cetophile, which is a cetopod is a dolphin. So he was in love with dolphins and he had sex with a dolphin. So he had a dolphin on his forearm with a gap, gaping vagina, and it said Cetaphile forever. So my craziest tattoo story, this was kind of like, probably about a good 12 years ago. Um, this was kind of when I was still doing walk-ins, and this guy walked in, and you could totally tell that he um, was a juggalo, for sure. <laughs> and he was like, I want ICP in flames on my neck. <laughs> and I was like, okay, all right, $100, man, let's do this. <laughs> so he lays down, I start doing it, and uh, his he opened his mouth, and it was legit tooth. I don't know if you guys know if it, what a tooth is, but his teeth were all one because there was so much freaking fur. There was like colonies on that shit. Oh. So his breath was just coming out of his mouth and I had to be right here tattooing flames, ICP, and block letters. <laughs> and then meantime, while I'm tattooing on him, his girlfriend and his two friends were sitting in the booth too watching the porn that they made the previous night. And then they're turning it what? and asking me if I would join them after. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is going the on here? Balls on those people. Right, that's Holy what I'm saying. Shit. They stunk to <laughs> high heaven too. I had to Febreze everything inside my booth after around the whole shop. I, it would have to be definitely the time I turned somebody's junk or cock. I turned their cock into a snake, literally from tip to balls. It was uh, it was pretty interesting. It was very early on in my career, and I knew the guy. And I'm just gonna pretend he's sitting here. So I'm like, I drew, off, drew it all on there and I'm like, how the hell am I gonna do this? How am I gonna stretch it out? So then I just grabbed it and wrapped it around my hand. I'm looking up at him, holding his cock in my hand and he's looking down at me and I was just kind of waiting for him to be like, no, I'm kidding, I don't really wanna do this. And then he, was, he didn't say anything and it, it was probably only a few seconds but it felt like an eternity and I was just like, right in. It involves a dick. It involves a butt. A girl named Ash Leezy was in there. So there was these twins that came into my shop. And I know what brothers are like. I have a brother, we're very, I have two brothers, but the one that we're closer in age, we're, we've always been in competition. So I could imagine twins, you know, like, they look alike, they sound alike, they might fuck alike. They said they have basically the same dick. So, you know, like, yeah, okay, these guys are like in competition. So there was a fight, a UFC fight. I, I was a, a one-man show, so like I would answer phones, greet clients, do tattoos, do piercings, you know, do paperwork, all that shit, all in a day, while still listening to the whole shop. So like I'm in there doing a piercing, and these dudes are talking about this fight, and I'm like, whoever loses, I'm doing a dick tattoo on you. We decided to get a bunch of beer and go back to the tattoo shop and do this tattoo. Well, so we went to this bar where Ash Leezy was working, ate some fucking food, drank a bunch of drinks, fucking, then we strolled back to the tattoo shop and just irresponsibly, I drew up a gigantic cock with wings, big, beautiful wings, um, and rocket booster testicles. Uh, the whole bitch was pink. 
and the wings were purple and green, and it was on his ass, like this big. Like I wanted that bitch to be seen. It was in my portfolio for like five years, maybe eight years afterwards. Oh man, I was proud of this thing. So the winner, he was, he was just jealous of the loser's tattoo at that point. This chick asked Doug, who worked at the shop, he was teaching me how to tattoo, asked him how much for this tattoo, and he show, she showed him a picture of a butterfly. He said 200 bucks, and then she came in with two guys, and they were like, great, let's do it. So they all go into his room, he draws it up, he's like, okay, where do you want to put it? And he goes to put the stencil on, and he didn't realize that she actually wanted it on her vagina. So <laughs> this, fine, whatever, it's a vagina tattoo. He's bummed he didn't price it higher. <laughs> the wings sit on the lips. <laughs> and the middle of the butterfly is the middle of her vagina. And the, the we have little rooms at the shop, so it's tight and he's got two dudes and this one chick and he's now tattooing for 200 bucks, this butterfly on this chick's vagina. And the dudes are watching and one turns out to be her husband and one turns out to be her boyfriend. And he realizes he's gotten sucked into some sort of crazy fantasy for 200 bucks and it's it's the door shut and it's hot and it's it's getting gross in the room. No big deal, whatever, that's kind of weird, but, What's weirder is that they came back like a couple weeks later and they had taken a picture of the butterfly on her vagina and wanted the picture of the butterfly on her vagina as a tramp stamp now. I assume so that while the husband and the boyfriend are um, with her, they both get to see the same thing. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so I knew this guy and uh, he was real weird, and I always thought that he was really weird, but I just thought he was like the, oh, he's he's safe, and you know, like he's not creepy, well, he's creepy, but. So he comes into the tattoo shop, and he is satanic, I guess, like known to be satanic, and he asked me to do, um, what's the Ludican V, the satanic Bible? The shop front told me, she's like, she carries around jewels and stuff, cause she's like super like, in tune like spiritually so she gives me like this little rock or something like that she's like put this in your pocket and i don't get like red blotches or nothing i don't get hives i got hives everywhere i'm starting to break a sweat i'm like what I'm, i've never tattooed a satanic symbol i've only tattooed like i haven't even tattooed a teardrop on somebody's face you know i lay the stencil and i have this big mirror in like my my booth and he does like he gets it on his wrist and he does this he brings out his arms and he like looks at the mirror and he's like doing his little like praying thing. And um, so he's praying in my mirror. I'm freaking out trying to set this little jewel in my pocket. I'm like shaking, pouring ink in my little ink caps and shit. So I, while I'm doing his tattoo, he's like looking at me and he goes, I like your feet. Long story short, he gets done. He backs me up into a corner and says that he could smell my soul. And then he leaves. So. I guess uh, shortly after she tattooed him, my coworker was tattooing the guy, and uh, it, like word got around the shop that he was a Satanist and all that, like heavy, heavy, like uh, summoning spirits and shit like that in his apartment. So he always brought like this little girlfriend along with her all the time, but she seemed like really sweet and nice. And uh, every time I would like look in there to where my coworker was tattooing the guy, his girlfriend would just look at me like, help help me, you know, like help me. Two days later, he ended up shooting her to death in the front yard and all kinds of crazy shit happened. Yeah, so in Sandusky, where my shop is at, we found out like same day. And he like, they were in a fight and like he like shot her in the head and then shot himself. And then they go into his house and it's nothing but weird, like they're all black rooms except for one room, which was her mm -hmm. like kids room. And like there was like dead animals in the back and like there's all kinds of weird satanic symbols on the walls. So he was legit. He and was I'm legit, uh, yeah. dude.